Hey, what's going on, y'all? So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the brand new anamorphic settings inside Unreal Engine 5.1. Now, this is not an official release. It's still in beta, but hopefully we're gonna get this an official build of Unreal Engine 5. You all know, ever since I started working in Unreal, I have asked for an anamorphic setting. I tried a couple of plugins and some of them are pretty good. But at least for now, we don't have to spend money if they do release this in official build to get some anamorphic de squeeze in engine. So with that being said, I have here a small scene that I'm kind of working on slowly. Uh, if you haven't seen the map video that I created about this environment, go check it out. I'll put it in the top right corner of this video right here. But to showcase what this anamorphic setting is all about, I left all the candle lights in the background so you can really see what this anamorphic setting is doing to the image. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and create a new camera right here. I already got it all set up. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't think there's a documentation on this yet. So I might not be doing this the correct way, just a disclaimer, but I was playing around with it in here and I think I found my sweet spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that is. So I was messing around with the settings. If I go to the right side here under the cinema camera actor, I'm gonna go ahead and move this up because this is kind of behind me. I just have the cinema camera actor right here. And on the right side of that, under the details panel in the lens setting tab, you're gonna see we have now a squeeze factor. Additionally, we also have a crop setting down here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and change the squeeze factor to two. And you're gonna see that the image is going to pretty much get stretched out. Now, right now, this is set, the film back is set to 16 by nine. So this right here is super wide. This is gonna be insane. I really don't want this. This is super wide for my taste, to be honest. So what I ended up doing was actually go ahead and play around with the crop settings. Now, traditionally, again, I used to do anamorph faking. So traditionally, I would take a Panasonic GH5, which is a 4.3 sensor, and then I would use this lens, which is actually a projector lens like this, kind of just giving you some background info. This is an anamorphic projector lens, okay? It's not a real anamorphic lens in the sense, you know, it's not meant for, you know, videos and and stills or anything like that, but this is what we call a DIY anamorphic. This has a 2.0 stretch factor. And if I show you the front of this lens barrel, you're going to see that it is oval or vertical. All right, so we mount, we mount the lens like this on the camera. And I've used this on Blackmagic cameras as well. And I've used it on a Panasonic GH5, which honestly, it's really the best thing for a Panasonic GH5 because of the 4.3 sensor. So in a way, when I first started using this anamorphic setting, I was thinking about it the same way. You know, it's like, okay, well, let me set the film back to 4.3 and then, you know, with two squeeze. And then usually in a traditional anamorphic world, you would de-squeeze it in post. After playing around with the settings here in Unreal, it looks like the de-squeezing is happening in engine. So what that means is it, you don't have to de-squeeze it. It's already being done here. So again, like I mentioned before, I like to export in 2.4 or 2.39 whenever I'm shooting anamorphic or anamorphic. So that is what I'm going for here. So if I go to the crop settings right now and I change this to 2.39, you're gonna see that this is going to be the perfect frame as far as export for me at least. Now, again, this is all subjective, but for me, this is going to work out. Now you're going to notice that even though I'm going to go ahead and check the draw debug focus plane, I'm going to change the focus all the way to the night here. You see that nothing's really happening. There's not much going on. And the distance, if you're, if you know photography, I put this, these night actually pretty far out from the background to get more depth of field. But if I go ahead and change the binding, the cinema camera actor, and we're gonna go ahead and jump into that cinema camera actor right now. You're gonna see that we're not really seeing too much. And you're gonna notice that even though we have the focus point pretty close, we're not seeing too much. So again, I started to go back to the real life anamorphic shooting. If you have a two times stretch factor and if you're shooting at 50 millimeter, if you have a two times stretch factor, you're actually shooting at a 25. So again, I took that knowledge and I try to apply it here. And again, I'm not sure if that's how it translate, but 
That being said, if I now go to the current focal length of 35, we're not getting a lot of depth of field because we're actually at 35 divided by two, whatever that is. So for me to actually get some depth of field in there, I'm gonna have to crank this up and say 80 or 160 so we can go to 80 mil, right? So I'm gonna go 160, we are now seeing those oval bokeh. So I'm gonna back up. And again, now you're seeing those vertical depth of field like you would if you're using a real anamorphic lens. Now, again, just a disclaimer, not in the documentation, but after playing around, this is how I'm going to use this, at least for now. Now, again, I know what you're thinking. This is definitely not completely anamorphic because for me, you need at least three things for something to be anamorphic. You're gonna need a squeeze factor, meaning you're gonna need a depth of field that's gonna be oval or vertical. And then number two, for an anamorphic, for me at least, you need to have some kind of lens distortion that distorts the image just a little bit. This is to me is too clean to be a real anamorphic. And thirdly, which what everybody sees all the time whenever you watch anamorphic, is that the lens flares, right? So for me, my Sancor 16 Charlie right here gives out that nice blue JJ flares, which I absolutely love because you can actually decode, you can actually see the coating of the lens is like purple or blue. So I love that. And again, I know that we don't have that in engine yet, but it is kind of nice to know that it, at least Epic is really starting to consider Unreal Engine for final pixel animation. Because every time I hear people talk about Unreal Engine, um, they always just refer to it as a game engine, saying, oh, no, we don't have that because it is just a game engine after all. But seeing this is definitely a good sign for filmmakers because now at least we know that they are paying attention to things like anamorphic cameras. Well, that's pretty much all I got for you all today. If you all have any questions, let me know. And again, thanks for watching. Peace out.